You know when something really significant happens in your life and you remember exactly where you were stood, exactly what happened, the conversation you were having at the time, like the people around you, that is exactly what happened to me when I lost my first client. And I always say like, how many mistakes I've actually made since becoming a freelancer, especially at the beginning. Sometimes there isn't necessarily the information that you're wanting in your specific niche. I don't know about you, but I'm the type of person who will go through something and then I'll try and Google it. There's nothing there. I actually get quite upset because I can't relate to anyone who's been through this and if this hasn't happened to you maybe it will sort of help you not to go through this which is obviously the goal and the aim. I started working with a client last year they put an ad out saying they were looking for a food photographer and so I replied and I was just like hi I'm here and eventually they replied and I was really looking forward to working with them and we sort of discussed the pricing and all that and it was all fine and they said we're only going to be able to do like one or two projects a month and then hopefully in the future increase it but for now this is what we're going to stick to and I said that's no problem. I did the first two projects for them and I sent them across. They absolutely loved the result and they were buzzing and they were just like we're wanting to work with you long term. However, after I sent through these photos, they then emailed me back with a whole list of briefs and projects to do. And I was like, okay, mind you, this is where I made mistake number one. I can tell you straight off the bat, I made this huge mistake. Like instead of saying to them, okay, like what is the timeline for these? Because in the email, they just stated saying, there's really no rush on getting them delivered. Now, when you say that to someone, if you say that to someone like me, I like to get things done as and when I receive them. Okay, so for instance, if I have five projects on the go, just say, I'll make the client aware and just be like look I can get this delivered to you two weeks from now three weeks from now I like to organize my time very well so that I don't leave clients waiting I just said to them okay that's fine and they said yeah absolutely no rush like whatever and I should have asked okay what is your timeline are you still wanting me to do one or two of these a month because remember they said that to me initially do like one or two projects a month and then or are you just wanting me to give these to you as soon as they're ready but I didn't ask because in the email they said no rush just give them to us whenever you're ready and whenever they're ready etc etc time I was like this is fab this is really gonna keep me going I really enjoyed the work I was doing for them mistake number two I put all my eggs in one basket I don't regret it because I feel like you do need to learn if I had someone at the time who had said don't put all your eggs in one basket, but I didn't. Or if I did, I sort of ignored it because that's sometimes what we do. You know, if someone's not necessarily in your field, I think a lot of times we don't really pay attention to them. I mean, I've done that plenty of times and I really shouldn't, but I did. I put all my eggs in one basket and one can only learn from that. What happened was I got very comfortable and complacent. So I was doing these projects I had them on a list and once they were done, I ticked them off, send them across once they were completed and edited and then I would get the payment straight through one or two days later. That's pretty cushy. I won't lie, like that is very comfortable life. So I just thought, oh, this is great on cloud nine, you know, and I got complacent. I stopped pitching to clients, I stopped reaching out to people. I became very comfortable with this client. I obviously had a couple of other long-term clients on the go, but as I said, I mean, there was no new work coming in because I wasn't reaching out. It was a very, very comfortable time. So if you put yourself in my shoes, you've got this project you're enjoying working on, you've got a client that pays you as soon as they receive the project, they're very happy with everything you're doing, and also they're paying you well you would probably do the same or maybe not i'm not sure but when you're just at the beginning of your journey you probably would do the same i remember when i had just delivered one of the projects over and i had literally put on my shoes like i remember this so vividly like all the details and i put on my shoes and i went downstairs i was walking out the door i was open the latch of the door the front door to go onto the street and I hear that sound that I have a love-hate relationship for, the emails pop up. I didn't think anything of it. I thought they were just going to approve it and that would be fine. But I read like the preview. Oh God, disaster. Even thinking about this just upsets me. I read the preview and it said something along the lines of, no, it was the subject line. That was it. The subject line says, can no longer afford services, something like that. And I thought, what? So I opened the email and obviously it said, really sorry, but we can't afford this at this time, blah, blah. Anyway, so I tried so many things. Like I tried like looking back at the contract being like, like this isn't fair, but obviously the contract stated they were paying per project, but I was meant to go for a walk. And I remember my car was parked on the street and I had my car keys. And I sat in my car just looking 
into the distance for like 30 minutes thinking, what am I going to do? Because we were halfway through the month and I thought, I'm not gonna be able to pay my bills. I had a couple of other clients on the go, but I was already thinking two months ahead, like how am I gonna pay my bills two months from now? What am I gonna do? This is a disaster. My boyfriend came in at the time, and parked in front of me, came after his work and he was walking towards my car and he saw me in it and he was like, what are you doing? Are you okay? And as soon as I saw him, I like burst into tears and he came in and he sat in the car and we sort of had a big chat about it and I felt so much better after. Obviously I was a bit upset that night but I made myself a nice dinner and we sort of watched a movie and I felt much better. The next day, I bounced back as much as I could. Now, depending on your situation, it is really difficult to bounce back when the rug has sort of been taken from beneath you. I sort of blocked two days off my calendar where I did like no photography and all I did was pitch to clients, reach out to people, reach out to clients I'd worked with before, you name it. I mean, I was a machine. I was like banging out the emails, reaching out to as many people as I could. Does their photography need improving? Have they got any campaigns coming up? Do they need your photography for social media. So all these things I look into, I don't just send a handful of emails to randomers with like a cold cold pitch, like that is just not me. I've tried that in the past and it just has not worked and I've received no response because nowadays people don't have time. So you've really got to capture them like straight off the bat. Even though you don't get a reply, you can honestly receive like 10 no's or 10 no replies, but get one yes and it is so worth it. And I know a lot of people say that, but it is the truth. You might even have people who don't reply like happened to me and then they reply like six months down the line and want to work with you in your Christmas time. It all counts. Eventually things started trickling in again. It was enough for me to almost get back on my feet. I mean, I would say that was like a huge, huge knock. Although it sounds ridiculous because everything was fine, but it was a huge knock on my confidence because I thought like, how could you be so naive and stupid? But it's such an easy mistake to make because freelancing life is hard, it's difficult. It takes a lot of self-discipline and motivation to get out of bed every morning. So when you receive a client who's the dream, you do become comfortable. It's almost like having a salary job, isn't it? You're you're getting this consistent income and it's almost like you've got nothing to worry about. The lesson I learned from that is basically you can have great relationships with your clients. I've got great relationships with my long-term clients and short-term clients. Great relationship with them all and that's so important to nurture them. I will say that again and again. Nurture every single client even if it's just a one-off. You have to but never rely on them in that way. Even if it's someone you've been working with for years, they can sadly due to their financial situation or something happening in their own personal lives you will probably be the first person they stop working with because using your services is almost like a luxury photography is a luxury and i view it that way so i always make sure now to never rely on any client financially. Always love working with them and always have a great relationship. That is just my word of advice. I'm gonna do an updated video on landing your clients and pitching out to people and etc. So stay tuned for those. But in the meantime, I hope this has helped some of you or if you've been through this, like do not worry, you will come back even stronger and better and you'll learn not to make the same mistakes again. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really, really appreciate it and I will see you very soon. Mm -hmm.